guys welcome to the channel I am Todd your host and this is the gun guru channel uh, today we're gonna talk about like everyday carry bags bags in general because um, you can get very specialized in EDC bags uh, assault packs bug out bags get home bags we talk forever about this stuff this video is more gonna be the basics of what kind of bag should I get how big should it be we're not going to talk about what we put in the bag that'll probably be a separate video uh with a more detailed breakdown i'm going to give you my opinion uh what i've found over the years what works for me what hasn't worked for me and there's a million videos out there on other channels uh, going over all kinds of stuff this this is just going to be my take on it you know just just an everyday person's take um with no i want to say with nothing in mind as in like this is a dedicated assault pack. no this, it's gonna be like here's a bag i've got here's what i carry uh type of bag why i pick this one over that one so on and so forth and we're gonna go over aesthetics and how they look and why would we want to use one that looks like this versus one that looks like that so on and so forth um i'm gonna apologize normally i can do this in almost like one whole take but we're going to be cutting in and out just because I've got a, a bunch of bags that I want to cover and they're kind of all over the place uh, right now scattered about and in other rooms which means I'm going to have to cut stop the video which gives you a cut and go get that bag and bring it over all right um, first I want to say you know please like share uh, subscribe to the channel obviously hit up the comments all this really does help the algorithm helps the channel grow um, there's links for patreon locals things like that i want to say uh, thanks to all those that have gone to patreon to, to support the channel because well talk is cheap and equipment and guns and ammo and all that good stuff's expensive so kind of helps me and helps the channel without further ado let's get into the video and start talking about bags okay so what are we looking for? Uh, well, it depends on what you want to do with the bag. Okay, do you want a small bag, a bigger bag? And I don't mean fanny packs. If you're wearing a fanny pack, you've got issues. Nobody wears fanny packs. Literally, I have a fanny pack. It's got a built-in holster. I have it as a novelty. Uh, don't use it, wouldn't carry it. I, I do have something that also resembles a fanny pack, but it's mainly like a first aid kit. And that's used for when we go like hiking or or something like that. Um, so we're going to be talking about basically backpacks, and there's a ton of them available out there in a multitude of colors. Um, the big thing is, what are you trying to do with it? Like I said, and how do you want to present yourself? So if you're looking for some sort of like a bug out bag, you're going to want to look, you know, like a gray man. You're going to want to blend in. You're going to want to get something that looks very civilian-ish and not military style. Uh, which means you're going to avoid Molly, Coyote, Multicam, things like that. Because that just screams tactical, which is going to make you a massive target. Uh, I always joke, that's like the perfect everyday carrier bug out bag. Uh, will be purple and sparkly with unicorns all over it to make you basically look like a loser. Uh, and nobody's going to want to take your stuff because they're going to feel sorry for you versus someone running around with, you know, a, a multicam assault pack where they're going to pretty much make you a target. Like, oh, he must have good stuff, good tactical stuff, so on and so forth. All right. But that's something for another video. Today, we're just going to look at the bag itself. All right. First and foremost is a standard bag backpack now they are good and I use them all the time one of my everyday carry bags is just a standard backpack it really never leaves out of its locked case because it's in a locked case with other things and I don't mean like firearms or anything like that I mean like work stuff it's got extra pair of pants extra pair of socks uh, sweatshirt uh, it's got um, like a rain poncho in there it, it's just stuff that you might need you know so if i'm at work and i soil my clothing unduly you know it's it's 
I spill something on it or anything could happen, I have backup clothing. I always have backup clothes uh, when it comes to a work uniform, all right? As a civilian or outside of work, um, I do have a bunch of backpacks. And the, the problem that I've always found with these backpacks is when you fill them up with stuff, all right, it could be all the, the right stuff that you need to fill it up with, uh, they tend to get squished. They, they tend to compact um, over time. So like this one right here, you know, it's a standard bag, but all of a sudden now, everything that's in it, the whole bag is just kind of crumpled up. Everything is settled to the bottom. There's really no structure. You pick it up, and it's just, I don't know. I, I'd rather have um, something with an internal frame. Um, when we're talking about framed backpacks, I've got one that, that dates all the way back to like the 80s uh, it's from when I was in the Boy Scouts. It's an external frame backpack with um, the metal tubing and all that. Nobody's, nobody uses that type of backpack anymore. Um, you can look at like the old Alice packs the military had. That is, uh, some of them were external frame. I'd rather have an internal frame, uh, which I have a bunch of bags from the military that are internal frame. And we'll, we'll take a look at those. Um, like I said, we're not going over the content, but some of the things that I'm looking for in a, a bag like this. Um, one is good padding on the arm straps, and this one has uh, material for wicking your sweat away. Uh, the same with the back panel, because wearing a bag is going to get hot at times depending on how much stuff is in it all right so you want something that's it's going to be comfortable padded uh, and really good for helping wick that sweat away this one has an extra pocket right in here you can utilize it for um, admin stuff or really it's designed to hold a plate um, but if you're going to have like a plate carrier on or something like that, it's a little overkill. You're not going to need it. Um, and for me, when, when I talk about um, doing uh, everyday stuff, um, e even when we talk about like the, the, the quintessential zombie apocalypse, um, I'm like, at that point, you don't a plate carrier is great it's good it's heavy you don't want to be running around all day with it uh, in fact at that point you're probably going to want to avoid everything avoid people avoid getting into a gunfight a tick whatever it is you don't want to avoid all of it uh because that's how you survive you just avoid the unknown as in you avoid other people um outside of your community that you have built all right so, I want padding, but again, it gets all crumpled up, and it's kind of like, meh. I could, I could make it work, but it's not ideal. It gets the job done, but there's always something better, all right? There's also uh, other bags we can look at. So, outside of that, which I don't even know which bag maker makes that one, but it's got Molly and a bunch of stuff on it. But you can just get your random backpack. It does have a little bit of padding, not much on the back. Um, this is actually just an NRA backpack. It's got some Molly on it. Again, though, this got a little area for a water bottle. It's not going to hold much. This is a good like little get home bag. Um, it's got its place but it's not ideal uh, this would be something I'd use for the range for the day uh, or like I said it's a good little get home bag you just throw it into your, your vehicle with maybe some energy bars some liquid IVs a um, little water bottle um, things like that 
not ideal. Going up from there, you can utilize something like this. This is actually uh, used this once. Uh, I bought it while I was out in Utah, just because I needed an extra carry-on bag for my flight home. So I went to the local, I think it was a Big Five, and just grabbed the backpack. Like a cliche, I grabbed one they had that was camouflaged. Um, the reason I went for this one, though, it's got a built-in water bladder, built-in camelback. You can see how much I use it. It's still the mouthpiece is still all wrapped up. Uh, the water bladder itself is right here. So instead of having to use an external water bottle, I can use this right here. I'm not. I wouldn't keep it filled with water. But it's a good alternative. Plenty of pouches and zippered areas. It's got some Molly. But again, this kind of sticks out. It kind of screams tactical. Uh, it is no internal frame, and it's got, obviously, the camelback for the back. If you ever carried a camelback, you know as you move around, it's going to slosh and all that good stuff. It's good. Another um, everyday carry bag for simple things. Change of clothes, maybe a little get-home bag. But, again, it screams tactical. So, it's another bag I would tend to avoid when push came to shove and my life is going to depend on it. All right, let me go grab some other bags. I'll be right back. All right, so we got, we went, we're going from little backpacks um, that you could use for like hiking, um, maybe just a little everyday carry bag. Again, I'd avoid anything that looks too tactical. I'd go more. A simple Jan Sport bag, uh, you can buy that. Um, any store is going to carry that, especially in the summer as you're getting closer to back to school. There's going to be a plethora of backpacks for sale at, at like Target, Walmart. Uh, you just order one off of Amazon any time of the year, but basically it looks like a school backpack. Perfect to help blend in. Uh, but if you want something a little bit bigger, something to hold more items, uh, especially if you're, you're setting up uh, your a bigger get home bag for a longer trip or a bug out bag, um, things of that nature. You can go with your uh, stereotypical hiker's backpack or uh, I saw a lot of these while traveling um, with people uh, like backpacking through Europe everybody had these bags and it's just your your larger like camping backpack this one has an internal frame nice and rigid uh, it is curved to fit your spine uh, the most important thing is since it is bigger it's gonna have the uh, the belt around your waist to help kind of put that load on that pelvic girdle uh, so it's not all sitting on your shoulders, constantly pulling you back. You can drop the weight lower around your waist. Uh, the only drawback is, with something like this, is if you're running um, something like a gun belt, this might start to get in the way. So if you're possibly going to be running a gun belt, or at least something similar, um, getting one of these with molly on it, or something where you could put holster, mag pouches, things like that. Totally get that. Uh, this is older. I mean, I've had this for oh, probably 20 some odd years. It's good. All right, it's got plenty of area to load it up. You can actually load it even higher. Um, this is designed to be cinched down and then tucked in to help keep everything in here dry. I would still recommend some sort of rain cover uh, to help keep the contents of this dry because the bag itself is not waterproof. Pockets everywhere for storage, which is good. So that's one I've used. That brand is EMS. 
if you're not in the Northeast, you might not know what EMS is. It's Eastern Mountain Sports. It is definitely a a Northeast, a New Englandy uh, brand. We've we've got those stores scattered about. Not as many as we had in the past, well, because the economy changes and they've closed a lot of stores. But EMS makes some really good hiking equipment, along with like LL Bean and things of that nature. Uh, one of the other bags I have while I was overseas, pick this one up. This is, I think, Marmot. Nope, it is Mammoth. All right, you can tell it's got a little woolly mammoth on there for a logo. It is supported, big pads, lots of padding on your back, nice lumbar area. It has uh, some molly on it it is not what we're used to today because this backpack i've had since 99 so it's it's been a it's been a minute but same as the ems bag you got your little cover that opens up it's got the little rain guard so you, you pack it up cinch it down again the, the body of it's not waterproof it may offer a little water resistance but still packed inside usually at the top if not in this area I'm gonna have a pack cover so I can at least cover the backpack and keep the contents of this dry that is getting bigger the only problem I ever had with these and I noticed is when you do pack them uh, EMS was the, the green EMS one, this is what got me frustrated with it, is I'd pack it, and then all the stuff in the bottom, at some point, where I usually put uh, layers of clothing, so I always put the, the clothing at the bottom, if, if it was like, you know, a, a Gore-Tex jacket, a windbreaker, a uh, sweatshirt, something like that, is once it's buried, I couldn't get to it. It was, it was always, what I needed was always at the bottom. So you'd have to empty out the contents of the backpack, rummage around down inside, and then try and get all your stuff back in. And if it's inclement weather or it's whatever's going on, you don't want all the contents on the ground, you don't want it getting wet. And so I picked this one up because you actually have access to the bottom. This bottom portion is its own compartment this part of the backpack is its own compartment which means I could fit down in here my jacket my windbreaker things of that nature it was kind of out of the way and if I needed to get to it it was pretty easy and the upper pouch was full of things at the bottom that I might not need on a regular basis versus having a jacket or a sweatshirt or some sort of moisture wicking material I could uh, easily access it with that one. Right. Now, I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm using today. Um, I found this bag. I love how it feels. I like how accessible things are. And it's not like I had to order it off some special website. It's I actually, I found it on Amazon. And it's a name brand. I'm sure most of you are gonna be familiar with it. I'll show it to you real quick. I gotta go grab it just because it is currently packed with all kinds of goodies and we'll go over it real quick and then we'll sh I'll show you like step up bags from there all right okay so the current bag that I'm using uh, I'm sorry for the if you hear a humming in the background uh, the furnace just kicked on and yes this is not a studio I am literally just in the basement um, it is finished it's not like I'm in some dark area but it is what it is um, but through into the other room is the furnace today is raining it is cold so we legit had to turn our heat back on uh, just to keep the house somewhat warm the the weather like I told you in one of the last videos our weather is schizophrenic one day is really warm next day it's super cold and rainy I digress getting back to backpack so currently I am using a Mystery Ranch two-day assault pack. 
Now, the reason I like this one is I like the tri-zip. I like the compartments that are inside. This, obviously, is not part of the backpack. This is a Spiritus pouch that is on the outside. And, um, this is currently holding uh, night vision. Oh, it has got nice, fat, cushioned straps. Um, the backing is definitely um, curved for your, your lower back and all that. Uh, the, the waist belt on it is thin webbing. It's simple, but it works. Uh, the nice thing is I can cinch this up and then I can always have this riding just above my gun belt. It does have Molly on it, and yes, it is in Coyote. You can actually order these in a plethora of colors. They've got black, they've got the Coyote, uh, they've got, um, I think, like almost like a turquoise. I don't know all the colors. Uh, there, you know, I'll put a link down um, in the description uh, that directly goes to where I got this on Amazon. So, plenty of pouches. I do like the fact that some of these pouches um, are sealed. So, obviously, if you're outside and it starts to rain, they are sealed with rubber. But there is lots of storage in here for all kinds of good stuff. Uh, I like the, the tri-zip. I can open the top, get to everything in here. I can still see what I have in the upper compartments. Um, we're not going over the contents, but on either side wall are multiple pockets. This, I do like that even when this is fully cinched up, I can unbuckle this and access everything all the way to the bottom. So if I need to get my Gore-Tex my Gore jacket out of the bottom or a North Face uh, sweatshirt that's in here, which is something for skiing. It's real thin, but it zips all the way up. It's very nice. It's moisture wicking. I don't have to pull all the contents out. I can just lay this down, unzip the whole thing, pull out what I need, and zip it back up. These zippers are definitely reinforced. This is designed to put up with abuse. <clears throat> There's plenty of other review videos on the Mystery Ranch pack, but two day assault pack, the Mystery Ranch backpack. Um, so we're not going to dive too deep into it, but this hands down right now currently is my favorite. Um, and I, you can see I've got a plethora of backpacks. But I love this one. Plenty of Molly on it for adding things like Spiritus pouches and, and other things you feel are necessary. But if you're just trying to blend in, it's perfect the way it is. Uh, again, I'd order uh, something that's a little more civilian-like. It has outer pouches right here for you to put stuff in. Um, like I've got the Sawyer um, filter uh, cleaning stuff in there. Plastic bags, all kinds of good stuff. So, if I'm going for a long duration trip, like a, a day trip, um, I'm going to be away. This is set up for like a, a get home bag. So, it's lightweight, yet it has the essentials in it that I need for about 48 hours worth of survival on foot. And we'll go over that in a different video. Alright. Say those are all still too small. Alright. I don't know what else you would need, but there are other bags out there that you can get that are even bigger. I would not want to be like using these as everyday carry bags. You could use them as luggage. Um, I use them for, I was just trying to think, I was like, well, I have them, but I use them for storing things. Oh, uh, like the one I'm about to show you, I use for storing, um, my plate carrier and a bunch of other items that are designed to actually be in the bag. So let me go grab that bag real quick. 
Okay, so the next two bags I'm going to show you is when you start getting into this size of bag, uh, you start running into basically military surplus or things you get as active duty military. Uh, one of the bags I use just for dead storage, items I'm not using currently or just overflow, things like that, is going to be my old parachute bag. This has got two handles, it snaps, it actually is just a giant square, it is a flyer's bag, we just call them parachute bags. I've also, uh, part of my everyday carry for work, which has eye and ear pro and a bunch of other cool stuff, is an old uh, helmet bag from the military that I've had for oh eons for, we're not going to talk about how many we have had it 25 plus years it's padded if, if you know what a helmet bag is you'll understand but it's a great bag for everyday carry it's small enough to where I just throw in certain things that I need and I can just carry it around with me I've only seen while living up here I've actually only seen two other people ever have bags like that uh, when I lived in Virginia, down in Virginia Beach, everybody had bags like that because we're all military. Uh, being up here in, in the Northeast, I never see these bags. Uh, and then, like two weeks ago, I was at work. Somebody had one. They were using it as a range bag. And uh, I started laughing. We started talking about the bag just because nobody ever uses them. It's a weird conversation starter with, uh, with a customer. But... It's not something you see every day versus living in a military town. You see them all the time. So the parachute bag, you can get these at Army Navy stores, um, surplus online. I'd say you could try a DRMO, but then you'll probably end up with a, a tri wall full of like a thousand of them. They're out there. Uh, they're durable. They're made out of a, a pretty decent canvas. Again, they're not waterproof or anything like that. Uh, when fully packed, it is like a giant, massive cube. It's good for what it is. I just use mine for simple storage around the house of extra equipment. Um, I've actually stuffed other bags in this bag, which is, you know, it's almost like a nesting doll at that point with a bag inside of a bag. I don't even know what's currently in this one. Uh, I just pulled it out of one of the closets. Okay, so I just opened it up and it's filled with a bunch of like one of my old gun belts. It's got holsters in it, uh, some iPro, yeah, a bunch of winter stuff. This isn't my only one. I've got several of these bags. They are good for storage along with your, your typical sea bag. Use those too. Uh, the sea bag is actually filled with old military uniforms. Uh, it is a complete sea bag from when I was active duty. Uh, just God forbid I ever had a, an inspection. I had a sea bag with everything you need in it that's supposed to be in it. And it was just stored in a closet. So if they're like, oh, you have a sea bag inspection, I could just bring the bag in and be like, here you go. And everything's in it, it's all stenciled. <laughs> You, there was an easy way to do it. I've seen people have to get sea bag inspection. They have to go out and buy all this stuff. Um, easiest way to do it was uh, I just went to the thrift store on base where they had uniform and uniform parts from those who were well kicked out and they're not allowed to have their stuff so it gets donated to the military thrift store and you can then buy, pick up uniform parts on the cheap. That's what I did. And then I just maintained that bag. And I didn't have to do anything. I just kept stuff in it. Now, even say that's not even big enough for you. Well, there are bigger bags out there. This one I do like. I've seen one other person with one. Um, it not only has carry handles like the green one does, but it's also got backpack. Back, back, can't speak. Backpack. Backpack. Pack straps on it 
so you can carry it like a backpack. When opened up, it is full of uh, Molly on two different compartments, and that is basically a giant deployment bag. This is what I currently store, like plate carrier and stuff in there. Um, it's got all the little parts for connecting everything to your Molly. Some extra little bobs and pieces in there. Uh, I haven't seen this in forever. It has actually a deployment checklist of all the things that are supposed to be in this bag. I haven't had, seen that in a long time. So, when you open this one up, see, big panel, lots of molly, another compartment on the back side. This goes right down the middle. You can pull this apart and put more stuff in it. That's a big bag. And that's what we call a deployment bag. All right, guys, we've covered all the bags. I've gone over everything from little backpacks all the way up to the giant deployment bags. You got to figure out what's going to work best for you just because I like it and I'm happy with it and it, it works for me and what I do. Doesn't mean it's going to work for you. So take it all with a grain of salt. You've got to figure out what's going to work for you. Just do me a favor. You buy something, use it, practice with it, mess around with it. You got to shake the gear out. If you don't shake the gear out, you're not going to know if it works for you. Some of these bags, you're, you think, perfect, everything I need. And then when that moment's going to come, you're going to realize really quickly it doesn't work or it's uncomfortable or you don't like how it's set up and you wish you did something else. Instead of figuring it out when you need to use it, figure it out before you need to use it. Perfect example is if you guys buy uh, chest rigs, plate carriers, gun belts, you do all that stuff, but you never use any of it, you never put it on and train with it, then what's going to happen is when you need to use it for real, you might find that you don't like how it's set up, you don't like how it feels, it's uncomfortable, it's just not jiving with what you're doing, and by then, it's too late. So, you buy stuff like this, you set it up, train with it, get training guys, because without training, you're just going to suck, and if you suck, you're going to suck. And that's how you get dead. So, let's not get dead, alright? Get out there, train, go LARP if you have to. I'm not going to knock Airsoft. It's a good way to shake out your gear versus sometimes going to the gun range where everybody's been shooting and you're in full gear and everyone just stares at you like you're some weirdo. Uh, it happens. But at least they're trying, and at least they're trying their gear out, seeing what works and what doesn't work. It's more than most. All right, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Later.